You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, goddammit! Get the point. Good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody. And how are you doing on this Freaker Friday? It's actually pretty decent out here in Grammy land. And guess what? You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com. Channel 10. Also on the RLM Radio XYZ site, the RLM TuneIn Radio Station, the RLM Internet Radio Station, and the RLM Spreaker Channel. And just in case you are listening over on Spreaker, please come on over to reallibertymedia.com. Think of a nickname. Join the tat chat. Give me some static. I'll give it back. The tat, too. And because, uh, yeah, my internet. Oh, I got an upgrade yesterday. They replaced some equipment, made it faster. And Grimmy goes, that's an upgrade. <laughs> now, I know it's really hard to tell the inflection in a chat. But, you know, when I read that, it was like, yeah, that's an upgrade. I told you, tin can, kite string, and duct tape. That's my internet connection out here. So just so as you know, if I can do this on that kind of crappy internet connection, connection y'all can too and i was looking at the schedule a little bit ago why because i wanted to have it pulled up because i felt really bad because i wasn't saying all the different shows (laughs) and so i pulled up the schedule and i saw how many openings there are and i'm sure grim can find a spot for you here on reallibertymedia.com if you wish to broadcast you know um, speak your mind he don't care you just got to be prepared to uh take what they say in the chat and if you don't want to pay attention to the chat that's fine you don't have to you really don't you can just broadcast all you want but yeah um you have to you just have to realize that you're you're probably gonna get some static in the chat so you may as well have some fun with it that's what i think so on this freaker friday let's go check and see hootie doody whatty I did, did, I did a lot of baking today. I did four dozen muffins today. And uh, yesterday, I baked um, oatmeal craisin cookie bars. Was that yesterday? No, that was Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday I did oatmeal craisin cookie bars. And what else did I bake? I've been baking like crazy. Good God. I know I baked something else. Oh, and I made five five batches of peanut butter cheerio bars and i made some regular peppermint almond bark candy and then i made some chocolate almond bark candy why am i doing all this well because at wake um oh i'm faster than vinny woo woo in it well that's not hard to (laughs) i'm not gonna I already started down that road. Man, I need to watch it. In any case, yeah, we got our Christmas party for work tomorrow evening. So um, I thought today I made a salt scrub and a body and after after shower body spritz. And they're going to get some candy in the stocking because that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to fill a stocking. And so I thought, oh, well. I will just make some goodies with essential oils and they will be healthy and clean and smell lovely without any nasty, harsh chemicals. What am I going to do with four dozen muffins? Well, I tell you right now, Grim, the farmer will eat one dozen just sitting there. Um, But I'm taking a couple dozen to work. Um, Because, yeah, last time I took a couple dozen to work, um the guests did get some (laughs) i think i took three dozen to work and i think they put a dozen out for the guests for for morning breakfast and then the rest of them got consumed by fellow employees so you know it's okay um (laughs) don't pick on the slow kid (laughs) but vinnie you're such a nose (laughs) 
Okay, let me start saying hey to everybody because I'm I'm already chitty chatting with everyone in the RLM chat. You need to come over; it's fun. These guys are nuts over here on Freedoms Network. That wonderful Effin site. There ain't no place better than the Effin site. Um, Grimner is over here. Thank you, Grimmy, for letting everyone know that I am live and in poison right now. I also see Cowboy Tech has been posting some stuff. Second annual Real Fake News Awards. Booyah, you go, dude. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of real imitation. Uh-huh. That's like an accidentally on purpose kind of thing. I've done a few of those myself, actually. I also see KD Troxel is here, as well as the lovely Estrella. And, uh, yeah, Grim and Cowboy, we're both over here for a little bit. Let's go check out realliberty.org once again. Grim, let everybody know I am live and in poison over here. I also see Vinny and Rob Works are online, as well as Miri B just checked out a little bit ago, and so did Mental Pancakes. But, hey, hi, how you doing? Lovely Miri B, sister from down under. Haven't seen you for a while. I, well, I have chitty chatted with you a little bit over here on Minds. Hey, guess what? I went over to the Real Liberty Media page over here on Minds, and and I reminded Grimmy's notification. Thanks, Grim. There's all kind of people online over here. Let's see. The Minds Newsroom is online, as well as the Healing Garden of Eating. Oh, I love that one. Um, Natural Cures is online, as well as People Against Political Correctness. Boo, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm not necessarily a joiner, but yeah. <laughs> you know, it's one of those, I don't want to be in a club that would have me as a member kind of things. Thank you, Groucho Marx, for that. But yeah, that's, that's one club, yeah. Because that's the P.I., uh, how do I have that on Twitter? P.I. Grammy? Yeah. P.I. Grammy. It's Politically Incorrect Grammy is what that stands for, for those of you over on Twitter that don't know. But once again, hey there to everybody. And that gadunk, that was my um, opera. I didn't have anything making noise on opera, so I couldn't adjust it down before the broadcast. But I just did now, so we won't hopefully have any of those gadunkers again. And yeah, I look on Twitter and psh, there's shrillery. Good Lord. And Jim Acosta. My God. You, wow. You know, you can just almost tell. I hate to say, you know, I'm judging a book by its cover, but wow. You really can. I mean, there's. it's not necessarily the cover. It's in the eyes. You know, look at their eyes. They're either very, very, you know, ooh, radiating ugliness out of the eyes, or they're dead. You know, there's, that's pretty much... Just look at the eyes. Eyes really are a window to the soul. Man, you can tell a lot about a person, especially if they won't look you in the eye when you're having a conversation with them. You can tell a lot about a person when they're like that. Um, okay, over here on uh, Twitter. Hey, Vinny just retweeted, or he liked it at least, cause the live on Spreaker thing. Um, I also see that Barman tweeted me out over here. Thank you once again, Barman. And there's that stupid... Covington thing again oh my lord people 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 you know when Dangleberry was in office and and people even so much as thought about well what was it they there was it was a news article about one of the daughters was smoking pot and man oh man those on the uh, politically correct side you shouldn't be picking on children children should be off and then here comes Baron Trump Man, they nailed that child right off the bat, started hammering on him. And yeah, you know, whatever. If you want to be that way, that's fine. That is your business. But guess what? You sure send a clear signal to everyone else just what kind of character you have or you are when you pick on kids. Mm, I really do. That's that's one of my really big no-nos, you know? You you pick on a child, or you abuse a child, you harm a child in any way, you know, like beating the crap out of them, or aborting them, or whatever, you know, and then they say, oh, we're going to work on getting post-birth -abor post abortion. Really? <laughs> I could list a few people that I think that needs to apply to. <clears throat> but, yeah, this whole damn Cuomo thing of after six months, you can abort the baby. What? What? Man, 
all that you know, and he says he's against the death penalty and yes he, and yet he's willing to sign a death penalty warrant for a child that just showed up in the wrong womb i did not say room i said womb w o m b man oh and the roger stone raid i did see a video of roger stone standing by a bar Someone comes up, taps him on the shoulder. He turns around. He goes, oh, my God, you got me. I'm drinking Russian vodka. Arrest me. <laughs> Maybe that's what led to that 5 a.m. raid. I don't know. But, mm, dumbasses. You know, the show is just so asinine, so moronic, so way out there. You know, this is worse than, than the daytime soaps. And I stopped watching those years. I'm I'm talking decades ago. I stopped. And I used to, I admit, I admit, I liked watching The Young and the Nauseous. <laughs> and then I, that was when I was, you know, at home with kids. And your brain goes to oatmeal mush when you're home with kids sometimes. And so, especially when they're like, three and one <laughs> which is where I was at at that time and then one day I was sitting there and I was watching the young and the nauseous and I went oh my god I'm watching a soap opera I used to tease my mom about that and so yeah <laughs> TV got shut off and I got a part-time job and the ex got pissed and I was like hey sorry um thanks Chloe okay see off on a tangent again there I go. Okay, over here on Twitter. Hi, everybody. Guess what? I got 635 stalkers, and I gained one, and I lost one because they wanted to chit-chat with me, and I just said howdy, and they said fine, and then they deleted it, and it's like, okay. You know, it's kind of like the Jimmy Buffett one. Apparently, Jimmy Buffett was chatting with me for a while there and kept wanting me to send pictures and, and all this other stuff, and I said, there's a picture on my podcast page. <laughs> And if you can't be bothered to click on that, then I'm done chatting with you. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of a heartless heifer when it comes to that stuff. But hi, everybody over on Twitter, by the way. Uh, Fakie Book, I shared it over on Fakie Book, but I have no idea what the hell's going on over on Fakie Book. I haven't been on Fakie Book all day. Well, except, okay, this morning I was on there just to check and see if my... I have a nephew on the way, or a great nephew on the way. Um, sweet Lisa B. There's Lisa B. Yay. Okay. Now, what I need to do, um, uh, he does look like Damien. Yes, Grim. He does. But man, oh man. It was, uh, kind of, it's like, Wow. You can't pick on this kid, but you can pick on that kid. Okay, whatever. It's just, in make up my mind for me, okay? I, I don't do well this, with this, um, yes, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm getting caught up on the chat over here, and yeah, Christmas party tomorrow. We had a lot of people that were out sick, and then when we originally had the Christmas party scheduled, we had a blizzard come in, and we were putting people up in, you know, air mattresses and stuff because they'd close the highway down and other motels were saying that they had no vacancy when they had vacancy but they were pre-screening or I have no idea what they were doing but we were inundated so we could not do the party then so we're doing it tomorrow so yeah I know rascal you're helping me in any case, over here in the uh, RLM chat, yeah, because I'm, I'm catching up and I'm, wow, Rob works. That was kind of cool. You got flipsy dipsy. Oh, Vinny did that. Okay. Oh, Rob finds himself agreeing with both Chloe and Vinny. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you know what? It happens, hon. It's okay. It's okay. So over here in the RLM, which is where you need to be. Just saying. I got Barman right up top, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, closely followed by Beetle. Hey, Beetle, how's Pippi doing? And I saw your daughter is going to college now. Booyah. 
good for you. I also see Grimner, the RLM God, is also here. Thank you once again, Grim, for everything that you do. The lovely Moose Girl is also here. And guess what? A little bit later on this evening, Grimner and Moose Girl are going to be on with the Freakers Ball. So be sure to check that out because it's always a good time had by all. I got to work tomorrow. <laughs> so I will not be up late watching. Oh, that was weird. I just had lights dim. Am I? Oh, and lights just dimmed again. Let's make sure I'm still broadcasting. Okay. That was really weird. Lights dimmed twice and the wind is not blowing. Huh. You got to be careful out here in the boonies. Just saying. Okay, back to saying hey. Uh, the lovely Kate is here. Hi, Kate. How's things doing with you? I hope they're going splendiferous. There's DC. I see you, DC. And those puppies are ever so adorable. Cute little puppies. I got my puppy fix for the day. I also see Chalcedony is here as well as the lovely Chloe e -E -E and Chloe the Hippie. Echelon is also here as well as yours truly. Ibe Don C is here and Meister Brower. Hey, Woody. Um, Ponder Gander. Uh oh, we got we got double dippings going on of more than just Chloe. Got a lot of double mint gum going on. Uh, double dipping of pox in the chat box. Got a poxified and a poxophone. Ooh, and a triple dipping because we got a pox of home later on down in the list here. Um, you don't do nothing, and you're very good at that. There you go, Graham. <laughs> You know, you need to always be very good at what you do. <laughs> There's some days where I am exceptional at being a slacker. <sighs> and then there's days when I'm not. So, um, if you're not doing nothing, then you must be doing something that, hey, there you go. See, Rob caught you the grammar Nazi. <laughs> Double negative. <laughs> You guys, hi, Sock. I said, uh-oh, Rob just got fixed. Um, ooh, was that spayed or neutered? Oh, I don't want to know. Hi, Rain. I see Rain is in the chat as well as RLM Fluke, the Vanoite of the RLM channel once again. Uh, oh, redneck phrasing. You know, well, yeah, us rednecks, we know, we understand. Rob Works is also here. Did you fire up that bubble? Yes, I, I see you did. Looking up in the, the fubbler has been bired up. <laughs> Oh, you guys are so cool. I love it. Um, let's see. Okay. Rome's is also here as well as Vinny. See, there's the second half. That's I can't decide which one's the evil twin in that little combo there. Uh, Phantom is also here. Hey, Phantom. How you doing? Asmo 2. I'm, well, I'm not Asmo 2, but asmo too awesome cyborg noodle may you be touched by the cyborgian noodleness and you know what it's apostrophian holy day so may you be touched by his noodly goodness dakota as well as frumpy are both here and looky there we got some grommet in the chat as well as java doctor too jj's from over there in scotland hey there jj's keep your kilt tucked down darling it gets a bit breezy and chilly this time of year i also see kozu is in the chat as well as moi 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 and hey ninson dubois that fun working every facial muscle muscle <laughs> obviously i overworked something Nenson Dubois, Poxy Home, and Pompa Pompa Ponsa Sock Puppet. Hi, Sock. Hi, Sock. I also see Skittle, the former F Bominator, and to round out the crew, the one, the only, the Uno, the card game that I have a tendency to get my butt whooped at while playing with my grandchildren because they're getting bigger and they're figuring out the tricks of the trade. Let me tell you, little buggers. Okay, so. Seeing as how I have switched to just doing an hour, because that really does work a whole heck of a lot better for me. Wow, that two-hour stuff, although it was fun, there were a lot of times where it was like, oh, damn, what am I going to find to fill up two hours? I know I can jibber-jabber for a long time, but, man, there, you know, there are times when I'm just not in the mood for the crap that's going on throughout the day, like what's in the spewage, which, you know, there's an awful lot of spewage going on these days, especially since somebody blinked. Oh, but wait, he didn't blink. He's playing the long game. Okay, yeah, you just keep on saying that. Yeah, you just made me go, blinked. 
<clears throat> okay. So, uh, da -da 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 -da. okay, I'm caught up in the chat. So now I'm going to go, oh, I probably ought to say hey to those in the red pill as well, those that aren't in the RLM chat. Hi, Apostle. I see you as well as F. Canella and Juan Ataco and KD Troxel and QFTW and Soily. They're all over there in the, R in the uh, red pill as well. So, okay, four PCs. Oh, my goodness. And a cartridge in a bear tree. <laughs> okay, so now to I'm I'm kinda trying to stick to just, you know, one thing on my hour long. And this one I saw the other day. I thought maybe I was gonna be able to, but as I got closer to the end of the hour, it's like, okay, I'm just I can't. Hmm. <sighs> Cause my voice does get worn out after a while. <clears throat> I know that's shocking to hear, you know, someone that's jibber-jabbered for, how long have I been doing this, Grim? Seven, eight years now? I just, you know, things wear out. The warranty ran out, apparently, and I just have, the, I'm trying to get the new part to, <laughs> okay, it's not necessarily a new part, but it's rework, you know, rebuild. <sighs> okay, so, this is from, um... Wait a minute. Oh, okay. Huh. It's through the pocket thing, but, um, and I'm going to have to click on the Guardian site when I go and share it to you, but it's from the Guardian. Um, and it is a post-work world, a radical idea of a world without jobs, which really, you know, when you stop and think about it, working and having a job really are two completely different things. They really are. But let's check this one out because this is a rather long op-ed. So let's see how many times I can interrupt on this damn thing. <laughs> so work is a master of the modern world. Yes, it is. And for most people, it is impossible to imagine society without it. Okay, I don't think work is necessary. I think having a job, but I digress. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, it dominates and pervades everyday life, especially in Britain and the U.S., and more completely than at any time in recent history, if you believe the historians. Now, an obsession with employability runs through education, which, yes, it does. My uh, granddaughter from my number two daughter um, is in high school, and she's a freshman, and they're already working these or what she explained to me is they are working their way um towards you know a freshman in high school and they're already doing their classes as in what they're going to be when they grow up kind of thing and she's she's fascinated by medicine anyway so she's doing a lot of things to do with the medical field chemistry biology that kind of stuff but it's like wow they're a freshman in high school and you're already job training aka slave training that's a little bit crazy and I, I think they do need to, with the way this is going, they need to change that to jobs is the master of the modern world. Yes, what is that, Grimmy? Um, oh, <laughs> consummate professional. <laughs> Thanks, Grim. That's a good one. <laughs> well, I am a former call girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, name only, but yeah, it's fun. Okay, moving back to this. Oh, uh, let's see. Okay, it's an obsession with employability that runs through education. That's where I went off track. Okay, so even severely disabled welfare claimants are required to be work seekers. No, they're required to be job seekers. J-O-B. We need to come up with some kind of nasty um, anagram thing for the, is that what you call it? No, that's probably not what, no, it's not an anagram. I'll think of the word or someone in the chat will think of it because it's, it's there. It's just not, it's ducking behind cobwebs. You know, every time I look at it, it goes, nope, can't see me now. So, 
um, job seekers. They want you to have a job, a J-O-B. And if you don't have a J-O-B, you are a worthless P-O-S. That's what they try to tell you. There's an awful lot of people at work. I know an awful lot of pe- people that work really hard at not getting a J-O-B. <laughs> and hey, whatever floats your boat, darling. Okay, I need a sip. And so, there are corporate superstars that show off their epic work schedules. Ooh, I'm real proud of you. There's hardworking families... And they are idealized by politicians, which, yeah, hardworking families, that's families that work together to make thing, make sure things get done. And they do things as a family unit that they keep changing the definition. Just pay attention here, peeps. Um, Let's see. Friends uh, pitch each other business ideas, which, yeah, okay, that's okay. Uh, tech companies persuade their employees that round-the-clock work is play. Yeah, I don't think so. Once again, slave to that clock, too, and time is imaginary. Gig employees, or, or excuse me, what is that? Gig economy companies claim that round-the-clock work is freedom. Yeah, yeah, you can just say it all you want to, darling, if it comforts you think that way. And then workers commute further, strike less, and retire later. Digital technology lets work invade leisure. It lets it happen, but you have to allow it to happen. You have to swallow it, hook, line, and sinker. (laughs) Just overbroke. There you go, Rob. Yeah. There you go. It's, you know, you always have to, that's those payday to payday people. And I've been there. I've, I've been on that payday to payday thing. And I decided this sucks big time. So therefore, I quit doing that. I made sure I didn't have to worry about that payday to payday. (sighs) When you're at the beck and call of someone else, which now I I still am, but I enjoy what I do. In any case, <clears throat> all these mutually reinforcing ways, um, jobs increasingly forms our routines and psyches and squeezes out their influences. See, I don't think work and jobs are interchangeable, but they use work as jobs. Mm-hmm. Andy Beckett, you and I are going to have to have a little chat. He's the author of this, by the way. Now, as Joan Biggs puts it in her quietly disturbing 2015 book, All Day Long, A Portrait of Britain at Woik, or Britain at the Job, work is, or a job is, how we give our lives meaning when religion, uh, party politics, and community fall away. Well, you know, the way you give your life meaning is... you. to do something that you're passionate about. That's how you give your life meaning. Going to a J-O-B doesn't necessarily do that. And yet, work is not working, really. That, well, I'll agree with that. And for ever more people in ever more ways. We re- resist acknowledging these as more than isolated problems, such as work's cent- uh, centrality to our belief system or be life system because there's a big lie in the middle of that word but the evidence of its failures is all around us yeah people aren't doing what they're passionate about that's a lot of it would you like fries with that sir now as a source of um, subsistence let alone prosperity a job not work is now insufficient for whole social classes And in the UK, almost two-thirds of those in poverty, or around 8 million people, are in working households or households that go to a job, at least one, some multiple. In the U.S., the average wage has stagnated for half a century, and yet cost of living sure as hell hasn't, has it? All part of the game. You see, one way or another, you are a slave. One way is jerk that paycheck the other way is crack that whip sometimes get both for one (laughs) ain't that special 
Now, as a source of social mobility and self-worth, work increasingly fails even the most educated people. How about a job increasingly fails? And this is supposedly the system's winners. Yeah, those educated people. Those are the ones that are really good at regurgitating what got fed to them. Ick. That's a mental image I really didn't need, but I gave it to myself. Now, in 2017, half of recent UK graduates were officially classified as working in a non-graduate role. In other words, would you like fries with that, sir? I should say it with a British accent, but my British accent really sucks. <laughs> Now, in the U.S., belief in a job is crumbling among people in their 20s and 30s. That's from Benjamin Hunnicutt, who's a leading historian of woke jobs. Jobs. Read that as jobs. They are not looking for their job for satisfaction or social advancement. And you can sense this every time a graduate with a faraway look makes you a latte. Yeah, yeah. Working at Starbucks. Mmm. I do not like Starbucks. I don't care. Now, jobs are increasingly precarious. I am I am inserting jobs instead of words in these, so uh, or instead of work. Now, more zero hours or short term contracts, more self employed people with erratic incomes, more corporate restructurings for those still with actual jobs. And as a source of sustainable consumer booms and mass home ownership, for much of the 20th century, the main successes of mainstream Western economy policy, jobs is discredited daily by our ongoing debt and housing crisis. For many people, not just the very wealthy, jobs have become less important financially than inheriting money or owning a home. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can believe that. <coughs> and just so as you know, you know, reading that consumer booms stuff, I kept seeing stuff after Christmas that that was the most profitable holiday season ever. I call bullshit. I seriously do. They're looking at raw numbers. They are not looking at adjusted for inflation. I'll bet you if they looked at adjusting for inflation, they would see that it really wasn't that prosperous of a holiday season. Just my thoughts on that. I know I'm not going to make it all the way through this because I'm off on a tangent again. Now, whether you look at a screen all day or sell other underpaid people goods that they can't afford, more and more jobs feel pointless or even socially damaging. So what the American anthropologist David Graeber called bullshit jobs in a famous 2013 article. Yeah, they are. There's an awful lot of them. Awful lot of them. And guess what? 800,000 800, of them are federal employees. <laughs> I think that's how many they said that were um, non-essential, that were not getting paychecks. Sorry, peeps. Do something you're passionate about instead of working for the Fed. Now, among Graeber's condemned private equity CEOs, lobbyists, PR researchers, telemarketers, and bailiffs, and the ancillary industries of dog washers, all-night pizza delivery that only exists because everyone is spending so much time, so much of their time at their job. Yeah, see, it's like once you start something then other things start building on you know it's like the income tax thing i mean when it first started and then it got the boot because no that's not constitutional and then they slowly reinstated it you know they kind of snuck that bad boy right back in again and then all of a sudden you've got cpas and you've got tax accountants and i i don't know if they're the same thing or not but you got h and r block and all so you've got all these other little subsidiaries little tentacles forming off of that and next thing you know it becomes this great big system and in industry you know so yeah you got all of these leeches sucking off of that one it's not good it's not good and that's what's going on here this need to find jobs for everyone 
Oy. Now, the argument seemed subjective and crude, but economic data increasingly supports that. Yeah, there's an awful lot of uh, BS jobs out there. Now, the growth of productivity or the value of what is produced per hour uh, worked or at your job is slowing across the rich world. And I got to tell you, I bought a battery for my riding lawnmower a year ago. Well, it's been it's been almost a year and a half now. I hadn't used it for one season and I need to replace that damn battery. Now that's BS. Batteries used to be three, four year kind of thing. And now it's down to basically one season. You got to replace the freaking battery every damn year. What the hell? That's ridiculous. And that's what this is talking about. You know, the uh, guarantees that they have, you know, your three year guarantee or your used to be refrigerators had 10 year guarantee. Now they're what? Two, three, you can pay for an extra year if you want, but that don't do you any good. You know, there's all kind of stuff that they keep cutting back the guarantee. Why? Because they want the consumer to keep coming back. They want you to keep spending. They want you to stay indebted. Stay at that job and keep spending more than what you take in. Because the Joneses, don't you know? Okay, so this goes on to say, despite the cons uh, constant measurement of employee performance and intensification of job routines, it makes more and more jobs barely tolerable. Uh-huh. That's why, what is that one? Uh, dirty jobs? Yeah, there are a lot of dirty jobs out there. Now, unsurprisingly... Work is increasingly regarded as bad for your health. Uh-huh. So, or, well, it depends on the work that you're doing and the job that you're doing. Stress, um, an overwhelming to-do list, and long hours sitting at a desk. Mm-hmm. The Cass Business School professor Peter Fleming notes in his new book, The Death of Homo Economicus, are beginning to be seen by medical authorities as akin to smoking. And yes, the longer you sit on your rump, the worse you don't have proper circulation. You aren't getting that movement going on. You aren't keeping your metabolism up. Jobs are badly distributed. People have too much or too little or both in the same month. And anyway or away from our unpredictable, all-consuming job places, vital human activity are increasingly neglected. Workers lack the time or energy to raise children attentively or to look after elderly relations. Yeah, you need to pay closer attention to your children. Don't be turning that over to the gooberment and public education. If you want to go forth and procreate, you better realize that that's a, that is a job that is worth doing properly. Doesn't pay real good monetarily. As a matter of fact, it costs you. But <clears throat> if you do it well, yeah, it pays off in dividends later. Not financially, but whatever. Now, workers lack the time or energy to raise their kids. Okay, I already did that. And the crisis of work is also a crisis of home. That's from social theorist Helen Hester and Nick Shrinik. Shrinisek? Whatever. <coughs> Excuse me. And this neglect only gets worse as the population grows and ages, which, yeah, look at all the little me tours, look at the people that have to have safe rooms, look at all the people that I'm off and dead. You said something that made me feel bad. No, I said something and your internal mechanism that cannot deal with someone confronting you with a little bit of reality, that mechanism went, Wah! and so it's my fault. No, no, darling, honey, look inside. If you are off-ended, it's inside. Now, finally, beyond all of these dysfunctions, loom the most dis uh, discussed, most existential threats to jobs as we know it. Or maybe work, I don't know. And that's automation 
and the state of the environment. You know, I really don't have a problem with automation because if a lot of if a lot of jobs are automated and then people actually can go back to doing what they're passionate about, but the problem with that is they have been taught that it's bad. It's bad. And a lot of people just go to doing the gaming or the boob tube. It's called a boob tube for a reason. In any case, <clears throat> some recent estimates suggest that between a third and a half of all jobs could be taken over by artificial intelligence in the next two decades. And other forecasters doubt whether um, work can be sustained in its t current toxic form on a warming planet, which, <coughs> excuse me, the planet, I don't know if the planet's warming or not. I really don't, because I don't trust any of the statistics that are out there. You know, w once you see how they gather that stuff and how they pick and choose their numbers, it's really hard for me to trust any of that stuff. So, I just know that right now it's cold where I am at. I am, I am, uh, using my powers of observation and passing judgments due to my direct contact with the climate around me, period. But it used to be, you know, if you look back at some of those videos, the little, the little things that they had before movies way back in the day, like back in the 60s and the 70s, those videos that they would do, where a lot of that stuff coming out in the 50s where they said, oh, you're going to have an automated home and you're going to have this and you're going to have that. We used to glorify the Jetsons. We used to think it was way cool, you know, to have that Jetson kind of thing. We were promised the Jetsons when we were kids, when I was a kid. <coughs> Excuse me. But now... They've got people thinking that, oh, that's a bad thing. Really? You want to continue doing that dangerous job when we can put a freaking automaton in there to, to do that dangerous thing? And then you can do something else? But that's all part of how this works. How this current system is designed. You are supposed to think, oh, 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 don't take my job. Really? Stop identifying with your job, honey. Stop it. It's just crazy. Your job is just a place where you go and someone dangles a carrot in front of you and says, that carrot, that's your paycheck. And if you do really good, your paycheck might get a little bit bigger. I chased that little wheel for a while there, and then I got to the point where it's like, this really sucks, and getting laid off was the best damn thing that ever happened to me, because now, when I go to a J-O-B, I'm doing something that I enjoy, and it's something, yes, it's hard work, it is, but it's getting me back in shape, and it's keeping me active, and it's keeping my mind active, and we're doing creative things. And so it is something that I am passionate about. And as the weather gets better, we're going to be growing a garden there, and we're going to be using some of the produce that we're growing in the kitchen at the motel. And so this is, this is things that I'm really in. This is, how you, this is how you fix things. You go and you do what you enjoy doing instead of going to a, a job you go somewhere where you enjoy what you're doing and it doesn't matter that you're not making that six figure salary of course you know all these people that are debt they're so far in debt their grandchildren won't pay it off It's crazy. It's just crazy. And that's the way the system is designed. You need to get your brain out of that. Now, this goes on to say it's like an empire that's expanded too far. Yes, it is. Jobs may be both more powerful and more vulnerable than ever before. Uh-huh. And we know that jobs multiplying problems intimately, but it feels impossible to solve them all. So is it time to start thinking of an alternative? Uh -huh. Let's see. So, your button pushing finger is sore. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rob. There's probably an oil for that. <laughs> okay. 
Um, so what is their suggestion for an alternative? It goes on to say our culture of work, aka jobs, <coughs> strains to cover its flaws by claiming to be unavoidable and natural. No, it's not. Now, mankind is hardwired to work. That's according to conservative MP Nick Bowles, and he put that in his book, Square Deal. And it's an argument most of us have long internalized, which, you know what, there is a difference between going to a job and working. I work harder out in my yard than I did for years at a job. So, but... The rewards that I reaped were much better. Number one, I could see what I accomplished that day. That in itself was worth it to me. And then I was growing my own food. Booyah! Bonus round. So, yeah, working. There's nothing wrong with working. It's the going to a J-O-B that you're not passionate about. That's, that's where the problem is. Now, it goes on to say that the idea of a world free from work, wholly or in part, has been intermittently expressed and mocked and suppressed for as long as modern capitalism has existed, which once again, they blame capitalism for this, but <coughs> I'm not so sure that capitalism is a, because I've actually pondered on this for a while. You know, this might wind up being a several week thing. I've pondered on this whole capitalism thing. And thought, you know, if we could just do without money. But money is basically a means of exchange. You know, if you've got something and, and that you are willing to, you, you've got extra of. And someone else has got something that you would like to have some of it. But they don't want any of what you've got extra of. Then that's where money steps in as a means of exchange. And seriously, in this current system, you can't just cut it off and say, okay, no more money, no more this, no more that. You have got to do a gradual. And, you know, we've got so much just in the memorable history. I know they've doctored with it. Even during my lifetime, they've doctored the history. They've dodged with it and changed it. And ugh. But if you look back, even at your own personal history, you can see that we are really pretty much ingrained. So we're going to have to change our mindset on this. And um, I don't really have a problem with a, a universal means of exchange. So long as that universal means of exchange actually has some inherent value to it in and of itself. If it doesn't have an inherent value then why are you using it as a means of exchange? It's a piece of paper with some ink on it. Now they've got little strippies in it to track it and all kind of other crap so that they can track that little piece of paper. But your toilet paper is m more valuable, at least to me, than dollar bills are. I mean, crime any Christmas, when all goes to down the sewer, I'd really much rather wipe my backside <laughs> with some toilet paper than with especially some freshly printed bills. Paper cuts in the nether regions just don't sound like a good time to me. I know that's probably one of those things where everybody's going, oh my God, she really went there. But yeah, stop and think about it. Okay, I put that thought in your mind. You're welcome. But you need a means of exchange. So in case two people that are wishing to, I want this and and he has that, but he doesn't want to trade that for this. And you need some kind of commonly accepted, something that has value that everyone. <coughs> Barter system works great so long as two people can agree on and they have what the other one is wanting slash requiring. But if, if that don't work, you need some kind of independent means of exchange. You just plain do. We are at that point in humanity where you need that. Maybe somewhere down the road we can get away from it, but for now, that's where we're at. The problem is the means of exchange has no intrinsic value whatsoever.
It's all imaginary. So, back to this. Um, repeatedly, the promise of less work has been prominent in visions of the future. Yeah, the Jetsons. In 1845, Karl Marx wrote that a, a uh, communist society workers would be freed from the monotony of a single draining job to hunting in the morning, fishing in the afternoon, rear cattle in the evening, criticize after dinner. Really? Criticize after dinner? Hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. And in 1884, the socialist William Morris proposed that in beautiful factories of the future, surrounded by gardens for relaxation, employees should only work four hours a day. Now, see, that's one thing that Michael Tellinger, um, in his Ubuntu society, a community, if the community works together, each individual only has to donate, yes, donate or volunteer three to six hours a week to the community. And then they go off on their own projects. But you have to be, you know, you have to be, you can't be just a Mr. Lackadaisical sitting back on your butt except for that three to six hours a week. You're going to have to support yourself in some way, shape, or form. And, you know, a lot of these concepts, they look really good on paper. But they don't work out so much when you get control freaks in charge of telling you who can do the hunting in the morning, who can do the fishing in the afternoon, who gets to rear the cattle, what kind of stuff they feed those cattle, how many things you can hunt in the morning, how big a fish you can catch in the afternoon. You know, once you start getting those little nitpicky micromanager control freaks in there, it all goes to shit. To go on with this, in the 1930s, the economist John Maynard Ken uh, is that Keynes? Keynesian? Oh, crap. You know what? I'm about at the end of an hour. Holy smokes. And I'm still doing okay. Grandma I might be a little long because I really, I'm getting into this. In any case, they predicted that by the early 21st century, advances in technology would lead to an age of leisure and abundance in which people might work 15 hours a week. <laughs> in the 1930s, as robots began to depopulate factories, a French social and economic theorist, André Gors, declared that the abolition of work is a prog uh, process already underway. Well, it should be the abolition of jobs. And the manner in which it is to be managed constitutes the central, oh, here we go, political issue in the coming decades. Wow. See, there you go. <coughs> I may do an hour and a half, Grim. <laughs> I'm, st I'm still working on it, and I still got to do the pig. So, just so you know, hon, don't expect it all the time, though. But this time, I'm really getting into this, and I keep going off on a tangent. So, since the early 2010s, as the crisis of jobs has become increasingly unavoidable in the U.S. and the U.K., these heretical ideas have been rediscovered and developed further. Um, brief, brief polemics? Really? Oh, such as Graeber's BS Jobs, have been followed by more nuanced books creating a rapidly growing literature of critique, critiques of the job as an ideology. I'm replacing work for job, by the way, or with job. Um, sometimes labeling, labeling it as workism, I think jobism, kind of like scientism, and explores what it would take to do such a thing. Hmm. And a new anti-job movement has taken shape, which that works for me. <coughs> a fretless bass. Hmm. Okay. Now, Graeber, Hester, Schnirk, and Hunnicutt, and Fleming 
and others are members of a loose transatlantic network of thinkers who advocate a profoundly different future for Western economies and societies, and also for poorer countries where the crisis of jobs and its threat to it from robots and, oh, here we go, climate change, are, they argue, even greater. And they call this future post-work. I call it post-jobism. You, you still got to work. You still got to do something with your time. And especially those third world countries, we need to get the hell out of there. Leave them people alone. They were doing just fine before we came in and said, we're from the banks and we're here to help. If you wish us to loan you money for infrastructure, we'll do it at a slight fee like all of your natural resources, all of them. That includes all of your, what used to be free time. Yeah. We've really destroyed an awful lot. You know, this whole bankish mentality has destroyed an awful lot of societies. Awful lot. Now, for some of these writers, this future is included in a universal basic income. I don't... Mm, mm, mm. This is where I start falling off of their wagon. Now, currently, post jobs, most high profile and controversial idea paid by the state to every working age person. Mm, see, this is where I don't like it. So that they can survive when the great automation comes. Now, for others, the debate about the affordability and morality of a UBI or universal basic income is a distraction from the even bigger issues. Yeah, it is. Post-job may be a rather gray and academic sounding phrase, or post-work as they put it, but it offers enormous alluring promises that life with less, much less jobs or no job at all would be calmer, more equal, more communal, more pleasurable, more thoughtful, more politically engaged, more fulfilled. In short, that much of the human experience would be transformed. Okay. The whole problem with that, you can't legislate morality and you can't you have to get the mindset shifted first. You have to get people thinking about things in a different way. I'm not talking brainwashing. I'm teaching, I'm talking about assisting people in a little bit of critical thinking, if you will, to think about what's going on, how they wish to spend their time, showing them how, you know, instead of giving a man a fish and feeding him for a day, teach him how to fish. Instead of giving him a loaf of bread, teach him how to grow the grain and make his own bread. You know, teach people how to be self-sufficient with all of the basics Get away from this whole government thing of you must pay taxes for this and you must pay taxes for that and oh, you owe us for this. <clears throat> Have you ever stopped to realize, and I know, off on another tangent here, how much the government relies on us going to jobs? You know, like all of these, uh, the fuel taxes that they charge. How much of a percentage of the gasoline is actually in taxes. The cost that you pay at the pump, how much of that is actually in taxes? That's how much the government relies on you. And then they also charge you other taxes on top of that. And then when you drive on those roads, you have those lovely little toll roads where you have to, even though through your tax dollars, you've already paid for that road, through your tax dollars, they've already allocated, so they say, for maintenance and, and repair of that road, and yet you still have to pay a toll to drive on that road every day, not just going to, but also coming back. Parking meters. You've already paid for the curb and guttering. You've already paid for the streets either through sales tax or through any other kind of taxation, which is basically, okay, we want this money, but my roads, 
you've already paid for that but now they got parking meters there so while your vehicle is sitting there not doing a damn thing it just brought you to wherever it is that you are doing that lovely little job it brought you there and while it's sitting there not that we're going to keep it any safer or anything like that, but while it's sitting there, we're going to charge you for it sitting there. Look at all of the little things that they nail you for. Even the even places, can you do you validate my parking? Really? All these ways that they make money off of you and these are all the little leachy tendrils that have formed off of this job system going to a job especially these lovely little cubicles oh and then you have all of the Starbucks that have built up you have all of these little food industry places that that feed you things that are not necessarily good for you <clears throat> at all zero nutrient value Look at all the leachy little tendrils coming off of this stuff. And you'd stop and realize, it. that's why when uh, my oldest daughter, her husband stayed home and raised the kids until all of them were in school full time. And then he went to school, work at the school with the kids. It paid for him to stay home she had a damn good job she still does has a damn good job that she really enjoys and yet he stayed home and took care of the kids and worked with them and taught them to read and and was teaching them basics in dealing with animals they raised uh had little uh, goats, they had chickens, they gardened, then um, they helped daddy build a great big shed that, yeah, you, I think he parked four vehicles in there. They used to play basketball in there when the weather was inclement. And, you know, those kind of everyday things, that's what dad did with them until the youngest started school full time. And then he went to work at school so that he was still around the kids. So, you know, it paid to have him stay home instead of having him go out and get a J-O-B and have to take the kids to daycare and having to, pro and trust me, you take your kids daycare, you got to provide diapers, you got to provide all kind of crap to the daycare and you've got your extra expense, extra wear and tear on your vehicles, all of this other fun stuff. It really does not pay if you put a pencil to it. But they have got us convinced that you've got to, both, both parties in the family have to have a J-O-B. You don't have to. You can make it work. You can stop thinking that you got to go and fight over that big screen TV at Christmas time and nobody gets it because you busted the damn thing fighting over it with someone else. Stop with that mentality and go back to let's be able, okay, if I can't pay for it right now, will I be able to pay for it in like five years time? And work this stuff out. Don't be getting yourself so damn far in debt that your grandkids can't pay for it. That's the problem here. That's what the system has been leading up to. You want to transform the human experience? Transform the mindset first. Get people to understanding that you don't have to have two incomes. I know with inflation, that's where they've got us right now. They've got us over a barrel, but you start stepping back. And I think that's why they don't want people, you know, going off grid. Because when you go off grid, they lose total control of you. It's a control thing for them. And, and they have zero job security if you no longer rely on them or be live in them. So stop that. Okay, so... I know the the rest of this is like getting into Protestantism and yeah, do, do. so I'm going to go ahead and just share this link with you guys. Um, let me see if I can get it to pull up. Nope, that didn't do it. So 
Um, I'm trying to, to pull this up to where it's not in my pocket. But, okay, maybe I can get it here. No, okay, well, they've got some links on the bottom. Um, let me see if this one will. Nope. Grammy, I'm going to have to figure out a way that I can get this to, to pull up and not be through my pocket. Because it's... <clears throat> I tried to go to the, the Guardian, and it just goes to the, the vague one. But I think I'm going to, because, yeah, this really, this, yeah. Now they start getting into, well, you know, the Protestants didn't. Well, this, well, I don't trust any of that history crap anymore. I really don't. I really don't. Oh, this is a must read on, yeah, I know it is. But let me go to the original article, you ding fods. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Oh, well. Oh, well. I'm going to go check out the pig. That's just all there is to it. There it is. For Friday, January the 25th, 2019, if you go by the current calendar. I'm just... You know, all of this, and I, I listened to a thing, Suspect Sky touched on Tartaria and a bunch of other things, uh, a video that Gary L. shared earlier. And that's that's some of the stuff that I've been checking into and, and thinking, oh my Lord, wow, that makes sense. Wait a minute, that makes sense. So now I'm really starting to, and then my mind starts going, really, are you going to fall for this crap? You'd fell for the other crap. So, so I'm kind of... <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of sort of brain fried right now. Can you tell? Too many inconsistencies out there. Too many things that make me wonder, really? What the heck was going on there? And a lot of things that just flat ass don't make sense. Unless you step back and look at it from a different perspective. But over here on the pig, I know I'm prattling. The word of the day is sequester. First definition, the red-headed stepchild of the U.S. budget process. It's one of the consequences which ensues when you kick the budgetary can so far down the thoroughfare that you run out of road. Yeah, what I say about you got a debt so big even your grandchildren can't pay off, that's what they're doing. <clears throat> and number two, it's a high-stakes game of budgetary chicken where both sides want to spend money they don't have without being held accountable for it. But um bum bum can you say someone blinked? I can. I don't care if they're playing the long game or not. In the quotable quote section, the fascism that Nancy Pelosi is displaying is the fascism that we are now seeing within the Democratic Party. It is a fascism that not only accepts but embraces anti Semitism. Okay, well, <laughs> I I really don't have a problem with that myself because <clears throat> Israel is if it was anyone but Israel kind of like if it was anyone but Dangleberry you ever notice that if if you are the flavor of the month when somebody spills that spins that flavor of the month wheel if you're the flavor of the month you can pretty much get away with whatever you damn well please Israel's doing that been doing that for decades I'm tired of it now <clears throat> it is a fascism that embraces Farrakhan. Okay. It's a fascism that embraces Hamas and Hezbollah. Okay. We're playing on the emotions here on some of this. I got to put that out there. It is a fascism that embraces Antifa and Black Lives Matters. It is a fascism that embraces William Ayers and Bernadine Dorn and Khal Khalidi. Really? And it is a fascism that tries to destroy an honorable man, Brett Kavanaugh. Mm -hmm. It's a fascism that tries to destroy the children of the President of the United States. That same fascism um, kicked it into gear when someone else called out a child of the POTUS, of, you know, the POTUS where she was smoking pot and it was illegal and, well, yeah. 
rules for certain people that do not apply to others. If they do not apply to everyone equally, they are no longer rules. They're just edicts from on high. And I don't listen to that crap. Let's see. Let's move on. It's a fascism that wants to take 70% of your wealth. Oh, we know who that is. It's a fascism that destroys the Constitution while waving it around. Yeah, Nancy San Fran Nan, the Botox Biatch Pelosi, is America's first fascist, and that's a fact. No, Mark Levine, that is not a fact. There are more fascists out there. <laughs> Sorry, honey. I have to agree with or disagree with most of... <clears throat> most of what you said in your quotable quotes, hon. Sorry. Not, no, really, I'm not sorry. I shouldn't say that. So, food for thought. If poison expires, is it more poisonous or is it no longer poisonous? See? <clears throat> that is a, hmm. It's kind of like my Epsom salt has an expiration date on it. Really? Is it no longer salty after a while? Hmm. Number two, which letter is silent in the word sent, the S or the C? Huh, hmm, hmm, huh. I don't know. Number three, do twins ever realize that one of them is unplanned? Ah, uh -huh. you know, that's kind of like, um, how, how does a dragon blow out a candle? <laughs> okay, uh, number four, why is the letter W in English called W? Shouldn't it be called a double V? Ah, good question. I like that one. Number five, more oxygen is slowly killing you, and it just takes 75 to 100 years to fully work. Yeah. Dying healthy, you still die. Mm-hmm. That's part of the human experience, by the way. Number six, every time you clean something, you just make something else dirty. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's a never-ending cycle. Number seven, the word swims upside down is still swims. Wow, I hadn't thought of that. That's kind of cool. Somebody was really working their thinker here. Number eight, 100 years ago, everyone owned a horse and only the rich had cars. Today, everyone has cars and only the rich own horses. It is kind of sort of ass bass backwards, upside downy, isn't it? Number nine, if you replace W with T in what, where, or what, where, and when, you get the answer to each of them. Oh, that's rather ingenious. Huh. <laughs> I just did that inside my head because I didn't think you really needed me to do that. <clears throat> okay. Uh, this date in history, the 25th of January, 1955, Columbia University scientists create atomic clock that's accurate to one second every 300 years. Joy turns to damn it when some killjoy brings up daylight savings time, which I just heard not too long ago that my state of Kansas, although they pull an awful lot of re-removes, someone is putting in there that they would like to end participating in daylight savings time. And I say, booyah to you, dude. Let's get that passed. I'm tired of this crap because it's all just BS anyway. This date in history, the 25th of January, 1956, when 38 inches of rain falls in Kilauea Plantation, Hawaii, the Tennessee twerp changes his name to Noah Gore and begins some serious arc shopping. What's a cubit? This date in history, the 25th of January, 1971, a murdering animal named Charles Manson and the three females... Uh, alleged humans who did his evil bidding are convicted for the Tate LaBianca murders. Did Charlie Manson ever participate in any of the murders or did he just talk people into it? I don't remember. Seriously. And finally, this date in history, the 25th of January, 1994, noseless warbler Michael Jackson, or Mikey Jackson, eludes justice, buys his way out of a nasty civil suit by paying off a 13-year-old boy he's accused of molesting. And I'm really questioning that. <clears throat> now, seriously, <clears throat> excuse me, 
I did kind of sort of, I did buy into that. And I told the Michael Jackson jokes and all that other fun stuff. But now when I see the way, you know, I'm seeing more and more and more how I, or at least from my perspective, how the leeches that be, um, if they, if you're starting to get out of line, how they start slurring and slandering and throwing mud and all this other fun stuff. Um, I'm not so sure Mikey Jackson did anything wrong anymore. I, I don't know. I wasn't there, but I'm questioning a lot of that. I'm questioning that narrative. Let's put it that way. Okay, so... That was over here on PIGazette.com. Uh, I don't know that he's actually done a new... Hmm. Oh, they've got a Reality Sucks Sparky top story. Oh, it's the Emperor's New Clothes. I don't know if they've upgraded that or not, or updated that or not. But come on over to PIGazette.com and say hey to Hambo and Porcus. And they may oink right back at you as they consume pizza and beverages like bear and belch they sit around and belch and fart ask them they'll tell you okay so i think just like stevie wonder yeah we all have blind spots yes i'm catching up on the chit chat over here because i was yeah mm, what Robot uses for AI cook meals. I don't want some robot cooking my meals. I actually enjoy cooking my own meals. Thank you very little. Hmm. Okay. Blind spots, blind spots. Okay, so, you know what? It's getting close to an hour and a half, so I'm going to go ahead and, and do my... And guess what? Guess what? I actually have the schedule up here. So, coming on later on this evening, Grimner and the Moose Girl with the Freaker's Ball, where a good time will be had by all. Tomorrow at noon Eastern Time. Yep, noon Eastern Time is the Dork Table with Flash Rooney Dork, where, yeah, things can get totally dorkular over there. Also on the schedule here, we have the Ocelli Effect at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Channel 14. Then on Sunday, we got the Blues with Grimner starting at noon Eastern Time, and he's going to lead up into Hal Anthony, who's going to open up a can of whoop-ass on yo ass behind the woodshed. Also coming up is uh, on Tuesday. Oh, wait a minute. Nope, I got to do Monday first. Grimm's Leftovers at 7 p.m. Eastern Time where uh, Grimmy's going to go over some of the things that he didn't or wasn't able to cuss and discuss with Moosey on the Freaker's Ball. Or, you know, just whatever trips his trigger, because I'm sure Grimm will come up with something. I personally like leftovers, and thank you, Grimm, for doing the Grimm's Leftovers. Then, on Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, in a perfect world, contrasting the occupation... Hmm, that's with Flash and Vinny. Is it still Flash and Vinny? Inquiring minds would like to know. I will be back next week, Wednesday, for the Wackadoodle Wednesday edition of the Rocket Chair at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, Thursdays. Wow, Flasher stays up till 6 p.m. Eastern Time. That's a late one for Flasher because Flasher's in Denmark for 20% off. You go, Flash. And then on Friday, next week Friday, is the Ponder Gander at 1 p.m. Eastern Time with Vinny. And then the next thing on Friday is me with the rocket chair. So, there. I got I to gotta keep this radio schedule. I need to just do this radio schedule as one of my start page tabs. Because, yeah... I've been rather slacking at that, and I apologize, because that is one of those things. That, you know, y'all, you guys have no idea what it takes to, to do some of this stuff. And it may sound, I know with me, it sounds really flippant and goofy. And yeah, I go off on an awful lot of tangents. <laughs> but 
you know, the people that put themselves out there to express their opinion, to uh, share their time with you, they are really, really giving an awful lot to you. And it would be nice if y'all said thanks. Because I think, I think you don't, maybe they aren't appreciated nearly enough. Because that, that is an effort to try and do this. I'm, it, it was getting to that point for me to where it was like, is it worth the effort anymore? And so I'm cutting back to an hour ish <laughs> for me has really kind of made it a little bit easier because I really was kind of sort of contemplating just saying, okay, I'm done. I'm tired, but cutting it back and being, you know, not afraid to say, you know what? I'm taking a night off is really so just letting y'all know. Um, let's see, where was I at besides just rambling and raving and whatever? Uh, da -da -da -da. No more. Oh, no more Vinny on that one? Okay. Okay. So it's just a poific world with Flasher. Okay. That works. Um, yeah, and the government doesn't have any mathematicians or economists. <laughs> Of course, mathematicians and economists are basically number doctors. They can do all kind of stuff with numbers. And a lot of those things are not necessarily pleasant. So, in any case, um, I guess I'm going to get the heck out of here. Y'all have an absolutely amazing weekend this weekend. I know I'm going to be busy, but I'm going to have fun. And that's the key. You know, if you're going to be busy, try and have fun with it. And if you've got some work to do, seriously, I mean, Disney had its faults, but yeah, hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to work I go. <laughs> you know, if you sing a little bit or just do something goofy or you just plain work with some fun people, um, you know, it's not, working isn't nearly so much drudgery if you can make it fun so i hope you all have an absolutely amazing rest of your evening i hope your weekend is just absolutely wonderful i will be popping in and out saying hey um but yeah i'm gonna be busy girl this weekend and uh, i guess i will really catch back up with you live and in poison next wednesday if you believe this whole time frame thing and then maybe i'll just show up when i show up <laughs> <laughs> but until then, please know that I truly do love you all, and I wish you all enough. Good night. <laughs>